In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. Messiah, come. Christ is risen. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, <clears throat> and upon those in the tombs, bestowing life. Many years ago, I had a friend who was kind of a, a radical guy. Many of you know him. And the kind of guy who always wore his heart on his sleeve. He was loud and he was a vocal character. He wasn't shy. And he was never afraid to share his intentions with anybody around him. So at one point, when he decided to radically change his physical lifestyle behavior, eating differently, and dramatically increasing his physical fitness um, activity, he proudly announced to everyone that he was making a total lifestyle change and that he was totally committed to it. And he wanted everybody to know in case they were wondering about his sudden change and this new direction and his new eating habits and his new exercise routine. And he was not shy to always remind us around him that I'm making a total lifestyle change. And for years, he stuck to that commitment. He lost tons of weight, and he got himself into great physical shape. He even got to the point where he was able to run multiple marathons throughout his life. He challenged himself to a new way of life, my friend. And he was totally committed to that way of life, utilizing all the means necessary to maintaining that way of life. And in doing so, he radically changed his way of life, transforming himself and reaping the physical benefits that came from his new lifestyle. I'm making a total lifestyle change, he would say. And as I read the gospel lesson this morning in preparation for the sermon, I was reminded about this friend and about the challenge he made to himself and the commitment he made to maintaining that certain new lifestyle change he was seeking. Because in a real sense, in the gospel, Jesus is issuing to us his own challenge, a challenge that we know he issued at least a total of two times in the New Testament, and a challenge that he encourages us to make our own total lifestyle change. In the gospel, if you remember, we heard about a man who was physically paralyzed. And we heard that this man had been sitting by a pool of water located in Jerusalem next to the temple, and that he was there for 38 years, along with a multitude of others, the gospel says, who were also there because they all had some kind of sickness. And it says that they we're all gathered at this particular pool of water because from time to time, the gospel says an angel of the Lord would come down upon that water and stir up the pool and that whoever was able to step in first would be made well. And so they all waited there by the pool in the hope of being the first one to be able to touch that water and to be healed. And it was in this place where the gospel says that Jesus happened to be passing by one day. And that when he saw the paralyzed man lying there, Jesus went over to him and asked if he wanted to be healed and then said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. 
And at once, the gospel says that the man was healed, even without touching the water. And then we're told later in the gospel that after Jesus found the man in the temple praying, he said to him, see, you're well. And then he issues the challenge to him. And he says, sin no more. This is the same challenge that Jesus offered in another place in the New Testament to a woman who had been accused of living an unchaste and an impure way of life and who was facing punishment because of her behavior by being stoned to death. But Jesus says to all those who were there accusing her and who were ready to, to stone her, he says, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. You probably remember that story. And what happened? They all dropped their stones, turned, and walked away. And after they left, Jesus turned to the woman, the gospel says, and said to her, and issuing the same challenge, saying, go and sin no more. Or in other words, Jesus was saying to both of them, I challenge you to change your way of life. Because the way of life that we were created for and the way of life that God desires for both those people and for all of us is a way of life that is freed from all sin. He was telling them, that lady who was being stoned, and to the man in the gospel today, and really to all of us through his words to them, that it is possible to make a choice in life, a choice to seek a different way, a different way than what the world may present to us. It is possible to choose a lifestyle that keeps us on what Christ calls in another place in the gospel, the narrow path. A path that offers and leads to the kingdom of heaven and a path that is kept freed from sin and a path that offers spiritual health benefits that lead to union with God. That's the narrow path he laid out for us. Because if it wasn't possible to do those things, Jesus would not have issued the challenge in the first place. And the best human example we have of what that way of life does look like comes from Jesus' own mother herself, Mary, the Theotokos, who the church has always taught could have sinned because she was human, but made the daily lifestyle decision not to sin or to live a life that kept her firmly on that narrow path that Jesus spoke about in his message. A life that was freed from voluntary sin as much as was humanly possible. That's our Theotokos. She's the best example we have as Christians of what it looks like to live up to and to maintain our full human potential. And that's the challenge that was being issued to the paralyzed man in the gospel that we heard about today. And that's the challenge that's being offered to all of us here today as well. Jesus is saying to us through his gospel lesson, go and live up to your full human potential. And he gives us the church that caters to the highest common denominator, a church that offers everything that we need in order to obtain 
and to maintain our fullest human potential. Prayer and worship and fasting and the sacraments and education and fellowship and service, all of the things that potentially can unite us to our Lord and God in heaven. If we commit to utilizing them in our own lives on a daily basis. Because God's only desire for us in this life and his eternal challenge to us in this life is that we live in a way that truly does unite us to him. And so, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are all being challenged here today and every day when we come to church and present ourselves before our Lord and Savior. We are all being challenged to make our own lifestyle change. And we're being challenged through today's gospel lesson to do that. And we're continuously being challenged through the commandments of God to do that. And we're being challenged to do as Christ challenged the paralytic to do in the gospel lesson this morning. And to do as the woman who was accused of impure living in another place in the gospel. And to do as the all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary proves possible every single day to us as human beings to go, leave here today, and sin no more. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. El Messiah come. Christ is risen. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death and upon those in the tombs, bestowing life. Amen.